But you also have to spend many, many hours living in those worlds, those yes. distressing, horrible worlds. You know, I mean, I know you get caught up in everything and, and as a filmmaker, but you're still, you're in that, you're in Abu Ghraib, and even if it's virtually, while think, you're making that movie. You have to live there. I think that's absolutely true. Um, but yes, it's nice to do a story that doesn't have that label on it. Yes. And you're doing it independently. You raised your own financing for this. Uh, through, I've paid for a good lion's share of this movie myself. Out of your commercial proceeds. Which I hopefully... Will get back. Will get back. I would be... So you're here at the festival and, and hoping that it will go over well and, and someone will buy it. You must have some interest already. Yes, we do. So I'm, this is uh, not a surprise. It was uh, an enormous relief to show the movie in Telluride. Um, and the first screening uh, went well here. So, yeah. I'm, but in but another several, era, you would have gotten financing for this ahead of I, time? I, I don't know. I mean, um, I've always had trouble. Uh, and I imagine I will continue always to have trouble. They're not standard movies. Um, they've always been costly in some way. Maybe not costly by normal movie standards, but costly by nonfiction, by documentary standards. But one thing I'd like to remind you of is that Abu Ghraib in many ways was a tabloid story. Yes, it was. Um, Lindy England, remind me of her name, England? Lindy England. Yeah. Is very much... Um, totally. Um, and the interesting thing is to take, you know, in some sense, Lucha is a tabloid story. Um, to take a tabloid story and endow it, take a story which for all uh, intents and purposes, has no enormous uh, importance or seeming value, and to endow it with content or discover the content of it underneath. Um, that is kind of... I mean, I, I, I sometimes get annoyed. Well, I get annoyed by a lot of things, but... There are documentaries which are really not investigative. Um, you know what the story is. You know who you're interviewing. You know the first, second, and third acts. And then it's a, a question of just putting it down. Yes, you may use real people to tell the story. Finding the visuals to tell the story. Finding the visuals that... Uh, and the heads. You're right. Blah, 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 blah. And... You know really where you're going. You know what the nature of the story is. It's not essentially investigative. Um, in the stuff that I'm proudest of, uh, I have no idea where I'm going. I mean, it's a terrible admission to make, but I don't. And you're walking, uh, you know, the planks, more or less, because Thin Blue Line the story starts to take shape as more and more interviews are done and my realization that there's no movie without this interview of David Harris and the fact that Harris broke the appointment for an interview with me killed somebody ended up uh, tried for capital murder I was a witness at his trial uh, sentenced to death blah 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 I was very 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 lucky to get that last interview, because without the last interview, there's no movie. Tabloid, tabloid starts with Joyce, but I didn't feel I had a movie. The last two interviews that we did... How many did you do? Six. Six in the movie, six interviews... Um, the last two interviews were with Ken Gavin, the British uh, photojournalist, and um, Jackson Shaw, the fixed-wing pilot. And with
without them, it really didn't work as a movie, in truth. And did I know all of the things that Kent Gavin was going to tell me? No. And the fact... I think I'm good at seizing on certain kinds of elements and... Yeah, why not use the word? And exploiting them, or at least bringing them, you know, if, uh, to the fore. I mean, the whole element of the dog, you know, going on these, you know, these, uh, these various you know, uh, prostitution gigs, uh, always the dog, he says. The, the That's your dog. through line. <laughs> well, it's my through line, I think, you know, good God. And uh, and then you know probably my favorite there's there are a lot of good lines in it if uh, self serving of me to say but when she says we're pregnant <laughs> um, that is what forges to me the connection between the two parts we're pregnant she finally got pregnant in a way that one could never possibly um, no. imagine no my, as I said my mouth was agape but um, <laughs> your um, do you have any sense at all of what you're going to do next. Um, good Lord, I have a feature that I'm supposed to do for Steve Zalian's company called Freezing People. Um, I have, uh, there's just a lot of diverse projects. Who knows what's going to happen to any of them? Do I do another nonfiction film? Will people give me the money to do it? I don't know. Sure they will. Or should I do a fiction film where the money is more readily available? So, yeah, I'd like to make another movie. And I'm writing. I'm you know, enjoying I'm, your blog. Yeah? On the New York Times, very much. I have a, uh, if I can f get enough time, I have a 17 part. It's now 17 parts, so it'll run, yeah, I guess it'll run over 17 days or something like that. Um... My unca the Uncanny Valley one, that was my favorite. You know, the, oh. That was really cool. I read a lot of words on the Uncanny Valley from you. <laughs> well, there's, it was on uh, Von Mager and, 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 and Vermeer. And the guy who was at the end of it, because... I, I actually think it's the best thing that I've done, bamboozling ourselves. Um, it was about this little known... It's actually... If you asked me the record of the Dutch with respect to the Holocaust, what would you say? I wouldn't know. I, I have no sense of them being involved did, at all. That they did, a, did some nice things because of, I guess, Anne Frank. Anne them. Frank, they wear, they, they kind of, they are cloaked in the mantle of Anne Frank. Right. And um, what's lost, of course, is that Anne Frank was turned in <laughs> by the Dutch. By the Dutch. But what's also, what's, it's interesting, it's interesting how history gets utterly and totally effaced. Um, the worst record in Europe, with the exception of the Poles, for sending Jews to the gas chambers. Hmm. The worst record close to four times worse than the French who are pretty goddamn bad. And the whole story of von Megeren and Vermeer uh, and Goering who bought the famous von Megeren Vermeer forgery is lost. Is lost because it's been taken out of historical context taken out of the world of the Holocaust, which I tried using Robert von, Jan von Pelt, who is my Holocaust historian, and Mr. Death, who was at the screening last night, who, who teaches um, here in Toronto, uh, helped me with that article, too. He's, he's in that article. So I'm very proud of that whole thing. Thank you. I'm sorry to 